Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We're now going back to many years ago to talk about, like I said earlier, one man who's very important in the history of Nigeria. His name is Chukwe Meka Odumegu Ojugu. He was a o, Ojuku, I beg your pardon. He was a Nigerian military officer. He was a statesman. He was a politician. He served as the military governor of the Eastern region of Nigeria in 1966 and the leader of the Breakaway Republic of Biafra from 1967 to 1970. Ojuku was active as a politician in Nigeria from 1983 to 2011 when he died at the age of 78. The big story about Ojuku and his involvement in politics in Nigeria began in January 1967. And that's when the Nigerian military leadership, they went to Aburi, Ghana for a supposed peace conference. Uh, we all call it the Aburi Accord now. It was hosted by General Joseph Anka. But the issue with that peace accord was that Different people left that meeting with different interpretations of what the Abura Accord meant. So the implementation of the, of, of the agreement you know, was subject to different interpretations. And as a result of this, on 30th of May 1967, Kono Odumego Juku declared Eastern Nigeria as a sovereign state to be known as Biafra. And uh, on July 6, 1967, Gowon declared war attack Biafra. It was three years of fighting, three years of starvation, three years of darkness in Nigeria's history, fighting for the soul of Nigeria, the sovereignty of Nigeria, and the independence or self-determination of the independent uh, people of Biafra. And after three years of fighting and starvation, Ojuku was convinced he had to leave the country. You know, they had lost the war. And we saw, you know, Gowon began to implement the three hours rehabilitation, reconstruction, and reconciliation. He declared at the end of the day that there was no war, there was no victor, no vanquished, you know, asking for reintegration. Asking for re reintegration. And at the end of the day, 9th January 1970, uh, Ojuku handed over power to his second in command. He left for Ivory Coast, where the president had recognized Biafra, granted him asylum. November 26, 2011, Ojuku died in the United Kingdom after a brief illness at the age of 70, 78. And it was a disdain history, uh, 2nd of March 2012, that Chukwe Meka Odumego Ojuku, Ojuku was buried in Eastern Nigeria. Yeah, it was, a, it was uh, almost like, because um, I was in the East um, in that time, and it, it basically was a shutdown of the whole Eastern Nigeria um, throughout, you know, that period, you know, from his death to, of course, the burial. Um, you know, there's controversies here and there, you know, about, you know, uh, what state he should be buried. You know, initially, of course, there was a little also, you know, squabble in the family. Um, Bianca also, you know, had her own little challenges here and there. Um, with the family and with, you know, the political aspects of, of, of all of it. Um, but it was one, it, it was a week basically of, you know, complete shutdown of the Southeast when um, he eventually was buried. And of course, there are people who are still very sensitive to that name and to what he holds. Um, and of course, the values and the, the, the um, perspectives that he brought into their lives. Um, People would also challenge, you know, uh, the likes of Namdi Kanu and um, the uh, Masob leader, um, um, don't remember his name now, um, about, you know, whether they are really towing the same lines that um, Ojuku was towing back then. You know, but um, it's, it's a sensitive story to, to share. It's yeah. a sensitive conversation to have in, you know, certain parts of the country. And I know a person who almost got beaten up, you know, in a fast food restaurant sometimes. <laughs> a friend of mine, yeah, this. for wow. speaking and not agreeing with the idea of Biafra. <laughs> he's an, he's from Southeast, but <sighs> you know, speaking about it in that way, he almost got beaten up by the waitress um, <laughs> in the restaurant. So, um, and we have security guards at the gates. <laughs> <laughs> so, rest in peace to um, Chief Fudumego Juku. There's also some parts that I'll quickly mention. So, in 1982, and this this one, what I'm talking about now is very related to the current administration. So, in 1982, Shehu Shagari granted. Uh, um, um, amnesty. Um, amnesty to Ojuku. He eventually returned to the country, uh, I think, through Ivory Coast. Um, in 1983, he contested for Senate, Senate in Nigeria, yes. lost by about 12,000 votes. But this is where it gets tricky. In 1983, then, there was the coup um, by persons in the current administration. <laughs> 
the current, current government that eventually, of course, destroyed whatever, you know, plans, you know, they had gone to court, Ojiko had gone to court to challenge the election to, you know, say that he won, you know, and all of that. But in that process, that's when there was a coup. And so all of that was thrown out. Mm -hmm. um, Ojiko himself was thrown in jail. I mean, I think it was in Kirikiri for a couple of months before it was finally released. So just wanted to quickly mention that. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll tell you um, a little bit more today in history. Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Also, today in history, our next story is uh, from 1978. For those who remember the name Charlie Chaplin, um, it was on this day that his body, it, was, it, it is described as one of the most famous um, um, stories of um, a corpse being stolen. It was on this day that his body was stolen from uh, where it was initially um, kept after his death in 1977, December 1977, when he passed. Um, so on this day, of course, Charlie Chaplin was a very popular com comedic British actor, um, became one of the biggest stars back then in the 20th century. Um, he was... Um, of course, you know, his body was stolen on this day from a cemetery in the Swiss village of cossier sous vouve located somewhere in Lake Geneva in 1978. He died on Christmas Day in 1977, and between Christmas Day and, and um, on today, um, 1978, his body was stolen. His widow at that time received a phone call and, of course, well, there was a um, asking for $600,000 in ransom. The police, of course, at that time then started monitoring her phone calls and monitoring all the phone booths in the area, about 200 plus um, phone booths in that area. She refused to pay the ransom, saying that Charlie Chaplin would have, you know, seen that uh, sum as completely ridiculous um, at that time. After five weeks of investigation, police arrested two auto mechanics, Roman Wadas of Poland and Gansho Ganev of Bulgaria. On the 17th of May, the two of them led the police to where uh, Charlie Chaplin's body was again buried, uh, not far from his family home. That December, the both of them were convicted of grave robbing and attempted extortion and were both sentenced. Uh, Wadas, I believe, was sentenced to about four years, while Ganev was sentenced to about 18 months in prison. Um, um, for their crimes. They blamed it on, you know, being poor and they were trying to make some quick cash. And that's the reason they, you know, um, you know committed that crime. Um, I would also quickly mention that it, Charlie Chaplin was one of the highest paid actors at that time. Um, he got, got certain deals that paid him almost $700,000 a year in the, you know, in the 1930s, and which was very, very, um, um, very, very high at that time. Um, so, well, that's on Charlie Chaplin. So now let's bring it down here to Nigeria because I did a little more reading and I found out that in 2018, uh, two men actually, Chuku Di Chuku, a 38 year old, and uh, Ibe Bethel Lazarus, 28 year old, <laughs> <laughs> committed the same crime. So they took the dead body of a woman after they broke into a hospital in, uh, or much rather, in uh, Imo State. They took her body and they were also, you know, eventually caught. And, um, <laughs> and they asked the mortuary owner for $5 million ransom. What? Apparently, both of them were ex-workers of the, of the mortuary <laughs> home. And so they were trying to make some quick cash. Also, in Enugu, and this one is actually very, very wild. Because in Enugu, in 2014, this same thing happened. And it was the body of a senior advocate of Nigeria who was stolen back then. But investigations further then showed that it may have been a family squabble, you know, oh. over where he was going to be buried okay. or who was going to handle the burial. And so between the son and the daughter, I think, um, his name was Chief Theodore Ezobi. Um, his body was stolen from the mortuary also in 2014 um, <laughs> before it was eventually found. Just imagine, you know, just imagine that man thinking of his children stealing his body because they wanted to control where he was going to be buried. Yeah, well, this is terrible. Well, it, From it, grave robbers, you know, people who go to grave, graveyards and steal all the juries that are buried with, you know, corpses, to people who actually steal the corpses. You know, for this particular story, Charlie Chaplin, they said the, the plan for them was to 
take his body and bury it under the grave, such that you know they come, they can't find the body anymore, mm -hmm. but it's actually there, so they can get some money and save themselves from their financial troubles. But they changed their, their mind and changed the plans along the way, stole the coffin, <laughs> and they made 27 calls to the woman asking. This is just for 600,000. Yes, for 600,000. Which, which was, you know, quite but, a lot. But, but the thing is, they said they were truly remorseful. I mean, you need to check check that out. In all the things I read, they said they were truly remorseful. They were very <laughs> sorry. Please forgive me. They still got four years and 18 months uh, oh sentence my God. Uh, individually. So, um, so, yeah, uh, 20, uh, 1978, actually, that's when uh, this happened. Charlie Chaplin's body uh, was stolen from a mortuary where he was buried, the cemetery was buried, and uh, eventually was found sometime in May mm -hmm. of 1978. And, of course, I also shared the story of uh, 2018 when it happened in Imo State by two mortuary, former staff of a mortuary home uh, that also stole the body of a woman and demanded five million naira from the owner. And then in Enugu in 2014, a former senior advocate of Nigeria who passed on also had his body stolen. I'm uh, sorry, I just wanted to mention, it's bad enough that people kidnap living people. <laughs> when you take the dead. What? what? <laughs> and God forgive that crime. <laughs> anyway, then we talked about uh, 2012, Tuesday, you know, March 2nd, when uh, Odumi Gujuku was buried in Eastern Nigeria. So thanks a lot for staying tuned on the segment of The Breakfast. We'll be back to talk important stuff like fuel scarcity. Do stay with us.